Hello, everyone. I'm just getting myself sorted here. Oh, what's that bandage there? Oh, well, it's my sympathy bandage, David. You're supposed to spot that and say, shall I make you a cup of tea, my dear? <laughs> no, um, it's a bandage I got about an hour ago. I've, I've just been a blood donor for the first time in a very, very long time. And so you go oh. along to a place, you see, and they take some blood from you, but then they put a big bandage around it. It's just a bit overkill, but I've got a big bandage. So they said that's so I'll get lots of sympathy when I get home. Um, many years ago now, uh, my sister uh, needed a blood transfusion. She was in a big hospital in London and she needed so much they had to send the helicopter out to get some more blood for her. And then they brought it back and they were able to give her several transfusions and she was absolutely fine in the end. And she's still alive and well. Um, but that helicopter was basically her lifeline, David. It was, it was what rescued her. Mm. So that's why I think it's good to donate blood if you can. But in our story today, we're getting a much bigger rescue than, than that even. And that was one person being rescued. Isn't that wonderful that they can do that uh, for so many people? But in this story today, we're going to hear about how God rescues a lot of people. It's an amazing story, really. Um, do you remember how the Israelites looked at the horizon and they saw trouble coming and they started to get frightened? And they could just imagine how awful it was going to be if the Egyptians got to them. Um, but Moses told them, or God told Moses to tell them uh, to stand still and to be calm and wait for instructions. I didn't listen to my instructions properly, actually, David, when I went for my to give this blood today. Well, I was sent a leaflet and in the leaflet it said you must eat before you go. But I thought it said you must not eat before you go. <laughs> so I was really, really faint after blood donating. So it goes to show, doesn't it, how important it is to read things properly and listen properly to instructions. And Moses has given them some very clear instructions to stand still and uh, we'll see what happens. So... They're at the edge of the Red Sea. The Egyptians are behind them. God did just, sorry, Moses did just as God had told him. And he lifted his staff high over the Red Sea. Now his staff was that big shepherd's staff that he had when he used to be a shepherd. It's not a magic stick, by the way. It's really important that we understand it's not like a, it's not like a wand. This is so that God can work through Moses and so the people can see that God is working through Moses. A strong east wind began to blow. It whipped up the waters of the lake into a bank on either side, leaving a clear pathway through the sea. At the same time, God's guiding cloud moved from in front of the Israelites to behind them. Been there and that's gone so that it blocked them from the view of the oncoming Egyptians. As night fell, the clouds' fiery glow gave light to guide the Israelites across the Red Sea. Quickly, the people gathered together their children and flocks and began to file across the path through the sea. All night they marched steadily across. By this time, the Egyptian horses and chariots were almost on their heels. That means they were very close behind them. They began to crash recklessly after the lost slaves. But the wheels of their chariots soon clogged and stuck in the mud at the bottom of the seabed. The drivers urged on their horses, but in vain. The wheels only skidded and spun. As morning dawned, the last of the Israelites had safely reached the other side of the sea. Hold your staff out over the sea again, God told Moses. And as he did so, the waters came flowing back. All of the Egyptian forces were lost. You will never see them again, Moses promised the people. Well, there was a great shout of happiness and relief. God had saved them. 
Moses burst out singing, I will sing to the Lord because he has won a glorious victory. He has thrown the horses and their riders into the sea. The Lord is my strong defender. He is the one who has saved me. Then Miriam, Moses' sister, took up her tambourine and played and sang too. Sing to the Lord because he has won a glorious victory. He has thrown the horses and their riders into the sea. And everyone joined in, singing and dancing in praise to God who had saved them from the Egyptians forever. And tomorrow I must make sure I've got a picture to show you of what we think it might have looked like when the waters were parted and the Israelites walked through. I've been in a bit of a hurry today, I'm sorry. So, what did being still look like for the Israelites? Well, it meant, first of all, to stop panicking and to be calm, to get ready to listen to the instructions from God. And then, then it meant carrying on as before, marching forward. And I don't suppose they wanted to particularly because there was the Red Sea, but they had to march forward. Moses had to raise his staff, as God had said. And then it meant following God's instructions one step at a time. And, and for a long time, did you notice that they marched all night? It was a long, long bit of walking, wasn't it? All the way across the Red Sea. God wants us to follow him too. One step at a time. One day at a time. Sometimes when we look at something very, very difficult, it seems impossible, doesn't it? To achieve what God wants us to achieve. But it's one step at a time. Listening for God's instructions and fixing our eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ. So I'll show you um, a picture tomorrow of what that probably looked a bit like. And I'm hoping my husband's going to make me a nice cup of tea in a minute. But we're going to say a prayer first. So hands together and eyes closed. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the tremendous victory that you won on that day when you led the Israelites across the Red Sea. We thank you, Lord, that the enemy was completely and utterly defeated. We thank you, Lord, because you were a wonderful God, a saving and a rescuing God. Help us, Lord, to trust you and to be encouraged by these amazing stories. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. And now we're going to do the blessing. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you safe. The Lord give you his peace till we meet again. Amen. See you next time. Bye-bye now.